But we are going up to Harlem right now. 650 young people in kindergarten to 12th grade are playing chess in the Martin Luther King Day tournament that's taking place at um, the Frank, uh, the Douglas Center up there. And, uh, Sean, you're on the air. Give us the atmosphere of these uh, young people playing chess. Yeah, we have over 600 players playing here in Harlem at the Frederick Douglass Academy, an event being run by Chess in the School. We just started our third round, and it's really quite exciting. We have 600 kids from all five boroughs, Manhattan, uh, from Manhattan, the Bronx, Brooklyn, Staten Island, and Queens, kids from five years old to 18 years old, and it's uh, a really exciting uh, event. We run tournaments every weekend, and this is our, one of our biggest events and most competitive events, so kids are just having a great time. And I have here with me uh, Hubert Lavi, who's a a senior in our program who learned how to play when he was in fifth grade. Now he's a senior going off to college. He's helping run the event, and he's here to talk about the event as well. All right, well, let's hand the phone over to Hubert. Uh, uh, Hubert, can you hear us? I'm going to pass it over right now. Here you go. Okay. Uh, hello. Hey, Hubert. It's great to have you on the air. We're around the country. We're here in Atlanta and Love 860. But tell us the atmosphere up there, given that this is your senior year. Are you competing, or I know you were one of the big organizers. Uh, no, today I'm organizing, but usually I compete. And it's just, you can walk through the cafeteria where the kids are playing and just see all the focus. And even though it's more than 200 boards set up, everyone has their eyes on their game. Because they're just trying to find that position just to win. Well, Hubert, I know that you are a highly ranked player. What is it about chess that brings out the best in you? Uh, I guess what about chess that brings out the best in me is just how in one instant you could feel like you have the best position and you looked at all the possible moves, and then in the next your opponent could just play a move that you you just didn't think about. And it you always have to be on top of your game and... You have to learn to anticipate what you can't and just hit the hit the next, like put your best foot forward, even in like hard times and bad positions. Yeah, I think the key here is to think before you move. Yeah, like I usually think maybe four to five moves ahead just in case. Yeah, that's some pretty incredible. So thinking. who gets credit for introducing you to this game, Hubert? Uh, actually, um... Dane Jackson, who he's the dean in 131 um, Middle School in the Bronx, and also Sean Smith, the guy who does the main organizing, because Sean was my, um, he was the coach that came to my school from Chessman Schools, and um, Dane Jackson, he was the guy in the school that, he, he ran the chess program. Wow, that's great. Now, Hubert, if you were to get us into chess, what is the coolest thing for you? Uh, I guess the coolest thing about playing would be, I guess, all the endless moves you can make. Because even from, like, the first move, there's over 30 different things you can do. So wow. you never you never have to be... Uh, yeah, you never have to be just stuck to one thing. And also, every game is new, and you just, like, meet new people. Like, you can meet someone from across the city, or if you play in, like, a national tournament across the country... And there's just a bunch of things you could do. Now, there's some kindergartens, kindergartners playing there. What impresses you when you see the, the next kind of generation following you playing the game? Uh, well, actually, nowadays kids get started early. And it's I guess like it's developing because like all over the country, people are like learning to play chess. It used to be that you would just like walk around and see older people play but now even the kids see it and they get interested and i guess like there's a whole culture developing around it where people find it interesting and it's it, it just had a good positive effect on the brain wow like, joey's yeah. nodding his head yes joey we have a world renowned uh, creativity expert idea expert and he said chess was a great game at that so let's ask this hubert i know you're a senior in high school you've organized this huge tournament going on in harlem what's next for you uh well in the fall of 2013 i start college at lafayette college in eastern pennsylvania wow that's and awesome my friend, with, with my friend who was also a part of the chess schools program that we actually both got um full tuition leadership scholarships to go to that school. We plan to, like, start a chess program there 
and I guess keep the tradition going and spread chess to everyone we come in contact with. What do you think it is about New York where it has such huge popularity, not only with young kids, but particularly with minorities? Um, I guess, like, it's because being in the city atmosphere, there's so much to do. But with chess, there's when, when you have so much to do, there's also so, so many people that you can meet. So it's just like you can make one friend playing, and then one day you could be walking and you see that person playing in like a different park, and then you just meet all the people in that park, and then it just, it's like it just spreads everywhere. Yeah, Hubert, they, they have in these parks, because I grew up in Manhattan, uh, they have chess boards that are actually part of the concrete, correct? Yeah, and it's like all you have to do is bring pieces. Yeah, that's great. And, uh, every city ought to, Atlanta ought to do that. <laughs> I mean, that was one of the greatest things about Manhattan, that there were chess boards all over the city. So, you you, you know, you thought, gee, I, you're right, Hubert. Just bring your pieces and you're, you're set. Let me ask you this, Hubert. Uh, I'm a novice. So what are two or three things you would teach a novice to, to begin to learn the the inner workings of the game? Uh, two things I would teach a novice is I would probably try to focus on tactics because – Tactics are what make the game, because if you only see the game one-dimensionally, you won't go far. You have to look at it from different ways and think all the different types of moves you can make, like there's pens and there's forks. There's, it's, the possibilities are endless. So how do you think chess has helped you uh, better in life, just living your life and making decisions? Oh, uh, it has greatly affected my decision-making skills. Like, I'm able to think more analytically. And because when you see a position, you have to analyze it and think all the cause and effect. And I just like, I use, I like to use that in life. Like, if I'm going to do so, whether I'm in school or like, I'm just doing like an everyday task, like driving home or something. I think if I do this, oh, this person could do that, or they might do this. And it just, it helps like the speed of your thinking. Like, you're able to, to critically think faster. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I learned something from my dad playing chess, uh, which I've a lesson I've taken with me throughout my entire life, which is at the end of the game, the pawns and the king go back in the same box. And uh, that's a, a lesson to remember, uh, that at the end of the day, uh, or at the end of our lives, we're all equal. So have a great time playing the game. Well, Hubert, uh, we want to thank you. Congratulations on this huge tournament going on. Uh, are you guys actually in Manhattan right now in Harlem? Uh, yeah, we're on 149th and Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard. Now, is that near Adam the Apollo? Uh, Junior Boulevard. Hubert, is that near the Apollo Theater? Uh, Hubert, if you, if you... Uh, well, it's it's not too far. It's on 125th. Yeah, there's an amazing story about purpose in the Apollo Theater, that there was a young girl, she was 19 years old, and she was supposed to perform one night uh, as a dancer, and she got there, and the place was packed, and her mother was in the front row because she, you know, all her life she had put her through dance school, and she came out, and the young woman said, Mommy, uh, in front of the whole place, I'm not going to dance tonight, and instead uh, she sang, and that was uh, Ella Fitzgerald, uh, of course, is the queen of jazz, and and changed our world because she found her purpose. So, well, Hubert, I'm glad you found yours. Well, Hubert, we love that we're talking to you. Congratulations on organizing this uh, tournament. Uh, we always ask successful people this question. You're clearly successful. What advice would you give to others living their dreams, given what you've been able to achieve? Um, I guess the advice, because like, now I'm staring at a wall and with a picture of Frederick Douglass, who the school is named after, and I see without struggle, there's no progress. And I just start thinking, like, you have to like get down and really do work to actually make something. So you can't just let everything come easy to you. You actually have to put some effort into it. Well, thank you. God bless you. We are so glad we got to connect with you. And Harlem, congratulations on this award-winning day that you've created for all these young people to live their dreams. And thank you for the advice you've given us all. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow, Joey, kind of cool to connect all the way up to, to New York and hear a young mind like that That's so right. eager to make a difference. It's our it's our hope. He's our, Hubert's our hope. And uh, 
Um, and, and chess is a remarkable game for thinkers. And we do need concrete chess boards in Atlanta. 